Right, okay, we are a go. Checking I'm live. Oh, mute myself. That's awkward. Right, uh, cracking back on with the cyberpunk gun. I've got a fair bit to do today, so I'm just going to plow into it. I want to get probably the majority of the rest of this complete today. Um, it's not going to be a one sitting thing, it's probably going to take six plus hours. Um, so it's probably going to be two or three sessions. First up, having spent a lot of time re-churning through reference images. So this is, because I'm going to be doing the grip and the main part of the barrel and the trigger guards and all the inner workings and stuff like that today, I'm now using a, a bigger image. You'll notice that these are the ones I was using before. They're a bit more zoomed in and specific. And I kind of, I've realized that this piece here and how I've actually done that piece is too long on mine by five millimeters. So I've done the measurements. So this whole bottom section needs moving up five millimeters, which is fine. It's fine. It's not a difficult thing to do. So what I'm actually going to do is start by taking these two pieces and just moving them out of the way temporarily. So I'm just going to move no, don't move the body. Faces. So let's take one, two, three, four faces and just shift them out of the way. So what I'm doing is give myself a clear cutting line here. So I can start it relative to here. So if I do an offset plane, down to where I'm going to want to cut. Just pretty much smack bang in between the two. Uh, and then I can use the split body tool to cut the body in half. Like a magician. So now I can move the bottom part of the muzzle up the five millimeters. See if it can go that far without overlapping, it cannot. So this is basically the issue here. Um, so I'm going to do it in two. I'm going to do it twice. Actually, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I know what I'm going to do. So let's cancel that. So I'm going to move my offset plane down a bit. So take my construction plane. Can't just move the offset plane. I thought you could, how can you just move that? Edit feature, yeah. I'm going to move it down far as I can without hitting the um, the lower barrel -y thing. But that's then going to move my cut. So yeah, okay. I do need to do a different offset plan. So up to So there, that's about four. Okay, and then take this, and I'm going to cut it again. Based on this top splitting tool. So now I've got a piece here I can basically remove. That's done basically what I wanted to do, which was avoid this top piece here from poking out under here. So there's a couple of things I need to 
do now. A few checks I need to make. Let's start by joining those two pieces to get back together. Notice how this is now bumped up against this. This is that's good. That's kind of what I was hoping. And back to a position where they're a bit more correct. But now these seem really close together. And they're obviously further apart so I think I just need to take this section here and bring it down a bit so this whole section here needs to be moved downwards and that's should be okay I believe I should just be able to move these faces if we change the pivot so I've got a vertical up down to me. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm okay with that now. So that's brought this whole bit up here a bit closer, which is good. So if I hide the muzzle here. Right. Let's go back to my other picture. So usually what I was doing was using the ratio. I was um, basically creating the line and then figuring out what the ratio I needed to divide it by was. So that's one way of figuring out sizing. Now there is another way and it's probably a little bit easier because it only requires you to do the maths once. And it's usually something I do, but you do sacrifice quality for it. So what I did here is if I just undo this last thing, the image size. I figured out how long it was end to end here, which is one four. Well, when I measured it, I measured one four eight two. Let me see the distance here. Now I know I have a given length of nineteen here, so I scaled that up to one thousand nine hundred. So nineteen is just a factor of one hundred. Then did the maths to say what percentage larger is nineteen hundred than one four eight two? So it's just nineteen hundred divided by one four eight two. Is, and it was 28 so the number that came out to was 128 um, so you then scale the image up by 28 percent then when you draw your line in da -da -da, to there you can see it is 1900 as good as which means this is now scaled so I don't have to do any more maths I can just measure say that distance there and know that is 97 so 9.7 um, which means things will be a lot quicker for this next part going forwards. So there's a couple of things I want to think about when I jump into this. First, now having looked at a lot of different reference images, I believe that this front, this rear part being tilted is a misconception. I think it's just a perspective trick. Um, I think it's actually pretty straight. It's, I think it's. I, I do think it's still tilted forwards, but I don't think it's tilted forwards as much as I've done it here. Um, I 
think that's that's way over consideration uh, over tilted. So what I'm going to do is um, flatten it off and create a new piece at the back. But I'm not going to do that bit quite yet. Um, what I need to do is a bunch of stuff actually. There's this taper in here, which comes down to the edge that joins with the um, the lower the muzzle. Um, and obviously it curves here which means all of this piece needs to be built in advance then this is flat to here but then it'll have a thumb indent which that's going to be a pain um, and then the whole the whole grip has to exist and none of that obviously exists in that for this model yet so one of the big things I'm going to start doing is start to piece it up now. Um, things like the little details here will come later and the, the, the cutaways. The most important thing is to get the core shape. Um, you can do that by figuring out exactly where positions are. So this, when it's done, is going to be a single piece um, cold cast muzzle brake. So it'll have metal powder and it'll be polished so it'll, you know, it'll look like metal. I believe this piece here is also metal, which makes sense. You can tell by the texturing on here that this is like a rubberized plastic, which is pretty common if you buy like a Glock, my Glock 9mm pistol that I've been using as a reference thing, it's got that same texture. So this is probably more of a plastic. Um, actually artificially creating that texture is probably going to be interesting. Um, I've got a few ideas about how to do it, probably going to paint paint on and then dab it with a sponge or something like that to put the texturing in there before it goes into the mold process um, and then you've got some parts here which are then smooth again so it's like less bothered about the grip and then you've got two specific grip pieces so there's a lot of interesting things to do here but because this bit's metal I'm going to want to cast it differently to how I cast the rest and not as a single piece so I want this piece to be another piece of the, the build of the bit that you build together um, and then this will all be a single piece and then all these little switches they're actually going to function so this one is going to drop the the clip out the bottom of the grip this obviously is all going to be pulled back which will reveal the bullet underneath the um, uh, I don't know what those things called but that thing um, this switch I'm going to make the assumption that in the video you see her pull the trigger and it's a full automatic or at least a semi-automatic pistol. So I'm going to make the assumption that that's a pew to pew pew to pew 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 switch. So it switches between the types. So that's going to be linked to a Arder fruit inside which does different noises. So full, full, semi and single shot noises based on the trigger pull. So the switches all have to function. So they're going to be a thing that comes in afterwards and all the trick switches are going to be individual resin gas pieces as well. And then these are little depress buttons which allow you to press that and pull up the muzzle brake. Again, that'll be a separate piece. But I'll get to those once I've constructed a fair bit of this. So it's going to be a lot of measuring and reproducing and then measure and check and measure. So a lot of rinse and repeat probably not going to be I don't think there's anything super complex to worry about drawing this thing there's no there's no shapes that massively concern me um, but I've said that in the past <laughs> and I've been I've been surprised before I mean the, the thumb bit here is going to be a bit of a pain the roundings for these should be fine um, so let's get into it um, and it's, it's going right <clears throat> start with this actually do I need to start with I need to do the whole thing cut the piece off and then do it because this needs to all consistently cut away here so this now has a height of 18, 17.918. Let me just check that on my new 
newly sized piece. So I to measure. Ooh, no. Eighteen. Great. So my newly sized piece is fine. So I can actually measure this both vertically and horizontally. So this cut out here comes down to nine and a half. I'm just going to mark that on this side. 9.5. There, so that's where the cutaway starts. So it's going to start from here and come back to here. Now, often you could just chamfer this bottom edge. First and foremost, I need to make sure that this bottom edge hits exactly that bottom edge. So I'm going to take this bottom edge here, extrude it, and then I need to actually hide itself and go to there. but not join, no, actually yeah join, but hide the muzzle so it doesn't attach it to itself. Um, and I think the cutaway isn't linear, so it's, actually no maybe it is, yeah actually I take that back, it is. So I've got this point here, and then I'm coming back to... It's obviously got a bit of a curve to it. And this bit here is the height of the top of this bit. So that's fine, I can build off that. So we have a distance of 45. And that's from the front. said the distance there was 45. So the line from here out by 45. So that gives me to this point. Then that's the next point I want, which is in line with, if we do this and see what it lines up with, lines up with here. So with that line, which is good, it means I can work from that. And it is a distance of 57.2 from here. 57.2. So now I can pull this down. Don't need the reference point over here anymore. Now all of this has to consider that it needs to go in a bit, um, but that's fine. What I'm going to do is actually create the top piece all around here, um, and then I'm going to chamfer this piece in, which I think should do the majority of it. I've got to be careful about that there, so that Basically, the chamfer is going to want to naturally come to wherever the end is, so I need to create something here that stops it. That is a distance of 9.4 down it. So let's just put that line in. Goes along there by 9.4. So that's where my stop is going to want to be. Okie dog.
right this is this is fine this is all good so the important thing in here isn't that 9.5 the important thing that I'm going to need to know is what is that distance to there and there and then that distance there and there so when I do the multiple direction chamfer here it um, it correctly you know gets to the edges we'll get to that in a sec because this whole piece doesn't exist yet so I've got a piece down to here 9.5 so if I say I want to end it there for now, then I think that's good, because then I can construct this piece afterwards. So this, that's actually a curved edge there. So I just need to watch out for that, because I've done it as a straight piece from here. Just see exactly where I put that point to. No, this was nine fifty. Yeah, so I've gone pretty much in the middle of the curve there, which is fine. It's fine. I can add the curve in retroactively. So down there is seven. is the halfway point there when it looks things which is 5.4 okay, look this has a total length of 3.4 I would say that 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 are in line so if I add a 3.4 here this goes down that way 3.4 and then I can make it parallel to here pretty much straight back for 28.8 cool and then the actual rear of the gun is a further or the rear of the grip further 18.2 we should put the rear of the grip right here which yeah, feels, feels about right Now, I'm going to presume there's a curved back edge here because that's pretty regular on pistols. Let's see what I've got in my other reference images. The problem is the hand is in the way of it a lot. But yes, there's a curved back. All these details on the top I'm going to do later. They don't really affect what I'm doing here. So that's going to be a curve like this. 
and I'd say that and that are probably parallel. So, let's put this piece in first. I need to just drop that line there. I don't think it's parallel to there. I think it's a little bit straighter. So, just for now, drop the line down here. Which feels about right for a grip angle. Just a line like that for now. Now, the nature of 3D modeling means that I can always come back and change this sketch later. And it shouldn't have too much, and it'll the, the effect will follow through. So I'm just completing my lines here. I'm going to put the, the curve in. Just put it there then. And tangent it. Oh. That was unexpected. Great, so this is the piece that kind of adds on to what I already have on the top here. I think actually here, like this bottom bit here gets cut away. As it drops into the lower layer it's really difficult to tell. Let's try it. Is it the best one I have? Sometimes it's nice just to Okay, well, that is not applying edits. So as this cuts back here, this bit here is further out, and then yeah, it does cut back again here. Things with like shadows can make this really difficult sometimes. So let's just start by adding this piece. I want to have this something here that stops see how that's the problem you're going to have otherwise is when I try and do the chamfer so the chamfer this whole piece so I think I might need to disconnect this bottom bit and then just reconnect them after I've actually done the chamfer Sharing a mutual love of a oh no I do not want OBS mutual love of destiny guns um so if yeah if I disconnect this here 
pasting that that line in there and then I'll chamfer all this round and then we collect this bob piece so I'm going to pull it apart and then stick it back together again sharper if we go up through there I mean that looks like it kind of goes just past this bit here anyway so I'd say that's pretty right but that to me looks halfway no yeah, I think I'm too high here. to use the patch tool it says I want this to be a, a single plane so we switch to the patching tool which allows us to take extrude a piece like that. if I go back to modeling I can cut the body based on that two bits front piece and back piece so now I should be able to chamfer just down to here and it won't then follow through into the previous bit so then I need to bring back that previous sketch in order to take these two measurements the feeling this one's probably going to be two millimeters or maybe three or two and a half or something like that. I've definitely made it a regular number. So from there to there is, uh, maybe I haven't made it an easy number. 3.148, 3.148. And then this distance from here to here. So, okay, 3.148, 9.184. 3.148 and 9.184 3, 4, 1, 4, 8, 9.184 So then take that edge and that edge similarly on the other side Distances. This one goes back three point one four eight, and the other one is nine point one eight four. So nine point one eight. Now this hasn't chamfered well around this corner. Okay, first off, it needs to be a rounded edge here. I haven't considered 
but it's a flat edge here and a rounded edge here. Okay, that. Does that create issues? Good question. Also, why was that doing that crazy thing here? Okay, let's see what options I have with the chamfer. Two distances. So the first one was three, and the second one was nine. Ballpark. Okay, so it gives me this issue. Now I could happily put a thing on here and ex extract it outwards, but I need to have a rounded edge on the cutaway, which means I think I need to do it a different method. Fortunately, there are a few methods we can take. And one of them is actually really cool because it gets to show a new technique which I haven't demonstrated yet. Um, and it's going to be using the sweep tool, which basically creates a shape and allows you to extrapolate that shape along a line. And I believe you can then tell it to do things sharp or smooth. So what I'm actually gonna start with is, if I get rid of the muzzle, I'm going to need to bring the muzzle back in for this, but start by creating a shape on this edge. And it's actually, it goes in 3.184, I think. Three. Yep. This one goes up to. say 9.2 it was 9.184 or something like that okay great get rid of the muzzle and then join these two parts together so this gives me a shape and this is the shape that I want to cut out basically along here what I should be able to do now is create a sweep based on that shape which follows, let's get rid of the sketches, follows this line and then this line. Okay. So, okay, one thing I forgot is that it follows individual paths. So, what you need to do is actually make sure you've got the thing as a single piece path. I'll stop the sketch here. if you double click it do you get the whole path now I'm not sure whether this top edge is going to curve or be a straight edge we will see create a sweep around this sketch that we've just done so it's done it sharp. Which isn't necessarily a pain, it just means that I believe I can also put the path on the top. Then that just kind of becomes like a multi-direction loft. Which again isn't necessarily a problem. You notice this seems a lot larger than the this one does. That's because it's it's right here. 
and then all this bottom bit here is going to get cut away so it will then seem smaller afterwards. So what I'm going to try doing now is cancelling that and seeing if I give it actually a second path to follow. Will it follow them both? So this is an interesting puzzle. You need the point here that it turns to be exactly right. Oh, actually, it's not an interesting puzzle at all, is it? I need to go up here by the height that I did, which was 9.2, I believe. Just check that. 9.2, yeah. And then it's going to parallel to the other one. 9.2, yeah, that's fine. And then line A this one goes out here as long as it stays at 90 degrees to that there and then join these two points and tangent them So again, that's a nice single line curve, and then just try it again. So make sure I've got all my pieces visible. So I've got one there, one there, and then the end piece. Create sweep based on this. That follows. is no. I'm just gonna just follow the top path. Create an illegal surface. Okay, so sweep is not the way to go about this. Loft would be good if I then had it on this end, which I believe I can just create now. So loft we can do by starting with this which goes up 9.2 and then filling in that stop that sketch and start a new one yes hold up hold up hold up, hold up. take that piece and patch it with an extrusion okay this this will this will work I guess so create a new body there and then put my new piece on the end of here. So bam, bam, and then in here 3.184. something which should be able to remove yeah okay bring the sketches back in so now these things should all touch so I should be able to go from here to here with a loft and then add in the rails of this both those two. Ta -da 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 -da. Oh, how's it go up there? That's interesting. Ooh. Okay, there's something I've not seen before. Why does it do that? And how do you prevent it? Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is 
take this piece, extrude it out to the corner, or as good as the corner. piece, extrude it out, cut out the piece up into the corner, and then go lofting again, from there to there, and that sketch back in, create a loft between those two pieces. Probably left me with a little hang off in this, yeah. A little hang off here. That's fine. Okie doke. Right, now that's, that's the shape I want. And when I add the other part of the chamber back in, and then join them back together. This, which is not quite what I want, because <laughs> this that that needs to go from here to here. Probably curved, actually. problem okay so I believe I can do it with lofting from here to here with a curve up here as a as a rail so stop the current curve between these two points one and two then just fusion ooh, 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 ooh. something like that but that's Nope. Okay, that's all kinds of not working. What if I go from, so I'll create a line on here, just to give me a point. Right from there to there. Great, that works. That's fine. I'm happy with that. So that curves it out a little bit more naturally.
rest of them as a buck ante for that. Good. I was getting that. So now I need to cut out this piece, or at least cut back this piece. I don't. Being said, I, there's no problem with cutting the whole piece out. Um, I realise something I haven't considered, which is why this maybe felt a little bit off, is when I was drawing my line out and dropping a line down, I was doing so from here, not from here. Let me just double check that with the sketch that I used to create it. Oh, no, 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 I did do it correctly. Okay, then that's that's fine. So it's really just this piece here that's getting cut out. And it get, gets cut as soon as it hits the, the muzzle here. Again, let's just drop that opacity down. Just so I know that I'm working from the right point here. Just need that. That's all I need, really. Let's cut it out all the way across. But make sure I don't cut the muzzle because I don't want to cut the muzzle. I just want to cut the chamber. And it's left me with a panel at the bottom here, which I don't want. It's okay, I could just jump in here and get rid of it. Which has undone the entire thing. Because of course it has. Now, why did it leave that there when it should be butted? Okay, no biggie. What we need to do is extend 53, right? Yeah. Get into 53 and just extend it down a little bit. There we go. Stop. So, my question now is how does this muzzle slide on the front considering that overlap? Because that doesn't work. Because you would usually think you put it on from the front. Actually, put it on and. No, because then the clips won't hold. These are the kind of things you need to worry about that obviously game artists don't need to worry about. game artists right. I'll worry about that later I'll come back to it so I've got to cut away on this side which actually now that I'm looking at there is why is that so oh it's yeah okay it's because the cut away was further Ooh. so does that mean this curve here I actually wanted to do from a higher point. So we should have done it from here.
This is why 3D modeling can be such an absolute nightmare because obviously things have knock on effects and sometimes it's hard to prepare for them. So there's a couple of issues here. <coughs> this is cut away at the distance of here. I believe it should be cut away from the depth of here. Yeah, all right, so I need to remove this whole cut away. slow at the moment. Right. <laughs> Let's take those out. I think McFly. to where I was. But still, no, the cutaway is going to be wrong. So then when I take out this, it's going to get me back to there again. Okay. There are a few ways I can think of doing this. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which one's going to be the best way. So I need to create the cutaway angle here as a as a plane. Then put that distance as a cutaway plane. So when I cut this thing in half, I'm gonna have to recut it in half. Do a base plane on it. Re-extrude, re-loft. So basically go through the process that I went through before, but with slightly different positions and values. Bit of a pain in the bum, but here we are. Oh, no, it was parallel, then it stopped being parallel. There and there. Extrude it on the patch. No, <laughs> don't want all of that. Let's, let's undo that and then start a freshie. fine because it's going to extend the tool anyway. got this cutting tool thinking about it yeah there it is oops I want to need this sketch and then I'm gonna to have to cut it again here in order to take some new measurements so if I start with actually that's pretty close Then we'll 
cut this body which will allow me to hide this and figure out these numbers here. Where's the slide coming again? So three point one eight four in still, obviously. And that is saying nine point two. Okay, no, right. Helps if you model it off the uh, the correct points. So in two point two eight four. Two point two eight four and down six point six. Two point two eight four and six point six. This chamber back in and rejoin them. And I need the. I wonder if I've still got that one that I used previously. One of these. No. Let's extract, extrude it, and then draw it. So it was 6.6 and 2.284. So I'll take. Seems smaller. Well, soon find out. Where's that previous sketch I did here? Fusion, you bugger. And then I'm just going to have to join these, but first I need to make sure I've got a, a line that will curve between them properly. Loft. 
Scottish railing. Oop. Okay, what's that? For some reason, my laptop is struggling today. Like, this should just be rotating. Okay, so it looks like this is overhanging downwards, which I'm cautious about because if it creates a shape that can't properly exist, then um, it's going to cause issues. And I'm not sure how to get onto the underside of it in order to remove the, the erroneous bit. Okay, let's do a test and see if I try to save that piece as an STL, does it break? Because if it doesn't break, I'm not going to worry too much about it. spend too much time freaking out about that. What I do need to do is add the curve back in though that comes up here. So I need the rest of the chamber back in for that. Actually, just going to change the material. So it's nicer to have a dot, the proper light-looking material when you're rendering it. But when you're modelling, sometimes having the lighter colours is just a bit easier. So again, I want to create a curve that goes from here to here. Hello. locked onto that plane already. Okay. Yeah, what's up? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's up? Uh, well, what's up? Can you help with texture turns? Oh, yeah, now's not the time to help with texture turns. I'm afraid. Maybe when I finish. Okay, so to add another point on this piece here. Join those back up so otherwise the locks won't create. What's the issue, Maria? Is it 
these are some things. Okay. Just wondered if it was something small I could advise with. It's a loft between those two points. Right, there we go. And that's fixed all that issue that I've had. What's happening? I'm going to be a while yet, Maria. I, is it urgent? Urgent for the 31st of January. So then, okay, cool. We'll do it in a bit. Now, I've done that bit there, and that's fine, but I actually think I want to reduce where the, the taper of that curve comes in, just so it's flat initially and then is a little bit shallower. So if I just get rid of that, and I'll just redraw it in. Yeah, I said a halfway point, that's fine. If I tangent it, that's probably pretty good. That's good. That gets me to here. So that's the majority of that cutaway piece there done. Now I've only done it on one side. The there is a point of this where it becomes not symmetrical. So I can't just do the entire thing in one half. So you notice this side is a bigger cutaway and this extra piece over here so I can do everything except that then flip it all over and then just add in the extra bits which are in the cutaway so I'm going to be ignoring this piece up here and any of the detail parts here for now um, yeah but I think I'm going to stop for now um, we obviously want assistance with something and it's lunch time, so it's be good to get some food, but I'll be coming back to this later on. So if you're interested in continuing with the progress of this as they move through the rest of the grip over today, I'll be back online in a bit. All right, peace out all.